Makita, DeWalt and Milwaukee all make great power tools, but which brand makes the best power tool batteries? If you happen to own a DeWalt tool, you use a Milwaukee battery in it, which is what we're gonna be doing today using this simple adapter, which is only about $20. So let's get the testing underway and find out once and for all which brand has the best power tool batteries. And the first test, we'll be using this air blower to test each battery to see which can generate the highest wind speed and last the longest. In the second test, we'll see which battery will last the longest under a moderate load at ambient temperature. In the third test, we'll place the batteries in a freezer to see how it affects their performance. In the final test, we'll test the ability of each of these batteries to withstand a big impact. In order to determine the power demand of this air blower, I went ahead and wired in a power meter that we can observe real briefly before we begin the test. This fully charged DeWalt is producing 20.62 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and power up the air blower. About 28 or 29 amps and about 550 watts. That's a lot of power consumption. So it'll be very interesting to see how these batteries stand up to this high drain application. To serve as our baseline, I'll be testing this Whitley lithium ion 5 amp hour 20 volt battery, which only costs $27, so less than half as much as the DeWalt brand. Now this battery is designed for the DeWalt brand. This battery is made in China. The Whitley weighs 593 grams. Whitley battery is fully charged, so let's get the testing underway and see how it performs. The fully charged Waitley has a voltage of 20.32. We'll see how each brand performs using this wind meter. We'll take the initial wind speed produced by this air blower and track it over time to see how performance drops. The wind speed sensor is placed seven inches from the end of the blower. The initial wind speed of the Waitley is 79.5 miles per hour on average. After one minute, it's down to 78.5. At three minutes, the wind speed is down quite a bit to 75. At five minutes, the wind speed is now at 73. Down again to 72 at seven minutes. It's still at 72 at nine minutes. Just before reaching 10 minutes, the airspeed suddenly dropped and the blower shut off at 10 minutes and one second. The Waitley battery is at 16.16 volts. At $59 is this DeWalt 5 amp hour, 20 volt max lithium ion battery. It claims it delivers 100 watt hours. Looking at the fine print on the front of the packaging, maximum initial voltage is 20 volts, nominal voltage is 18. A close look at the battery pack, cells are made in Malaysia, pack assembled in Mexico. The DeWalt weighs 629 grams, which is 36 grams heavier than the Waitley brand. The DeWalt initial voltage is 20.7. The DeWalt is at 79.5 miles per hour, the same as the Waitley. After one minute, it's still at 79.5, a full mile per hour faster than the Waitley. At three minutes, it's down slightly to 79, four miles per hour faster than the Waitley. At five minutes, it's dropped to 75. It's down again to 73 at seven minutes. Down again slightly to 72 at nine minutes. It's holding steady at 72 miles per hour at 10 and 11 minutes. Finally down to 71 at 12 minutes. And the DeWalt finally gave up at 12 minutes and 46 seconds, nearly three minutes longer than the Waitley brand. 12 minutes and 46 seconds for the DeWalt, so the DeWalt outlasted the Waitley by almost three minutes. The DeWalt discharged all the way down to 12.93 volts. At about six and a half dollars more than the DeWalt is this Milwaukee at $65.49. This is the Red Lithium XC 5.0. Extended capacity, more power and runtime, great performance for all demands. Two and a half times more runtime than their standard lithium. Up to 20% more power, they show that it delivers more torque. Up to two times more life, they say it lasts twice as long. Battery, cells made in Korea, Malaysia, Japan, and Singapore with further processing in China. The DeWalt weighs 629 grams and the Milwaukee weighs 736 grams, which is 107 grams heavier than the DeWalt. The Milwaukee battery mounts to this side of the adapter, the other side mounts to the DeWalt tool. You can buy these adapters on Amazon or eBay for around $20 to $25 each. The biggest drawback to the adapter is it cannot be used for battery charging. The Milwaukee is fully charged. 20.53 volts for the fully charged Milwaukee. The Milwaukee is off to a good start at 79.5, the same as the DeWalt. It's still tied with the DeWalt after a minute. At three minutes, it's at 77.3 and the DeWalt was at 79. At five minutes, it's at 73.6 and the DeWalt was at 75. At seven minutes, it's at 72.7 miles per hour and the DeWalt was at 73. At nine minutes, the Milwaukee's at 72, the same as the DeWalt. The Milwaukee stays at 72 volts tied with the DeWalt through minute 11. At minute 12, the Milwaukee suddenly dropped to 67. And the Milwaukee is finished at 12 minutes and 26 seconds, which is only 20 seconds less than the DeWalt. 
Waukee is discharged at 13.06 volts. At $87.50, this Makita 5 amp hour 18 volt battery cost about $20 more than the competition, up to 150% more capacity. It claims to have a 45 minute charge time. The Makita packaging indicated made in Japan, however the battery itself indicates made in Korea and further processing in Vietnam. All the batteries claim to be 5 amp hours, but what's very interesting is Makita only claims to provide 90 watt hours and DeWalt says they produce 100 watt hours. There's no information on the Milwaukee battery regarding the number of watt hours it can produce. The Makita weighs 633 grams, which is only 4 grams more than the DeWalt, but over 100 grams less than the Milwaukee. The Makita is fully charged. The fully charged Makita is at 20.41 volts. The Makita is off to a good start at 79.5, the same as the other brands. After one minute, it's still at 79.5. At three minutes, it's down slightly to 78, slightly slower than the DeWalt. At minute 5, it's at 74.4, slightly slower than the DeWalt, but faster than the Milwaukee. At minute 7, it's at 72, and it's tied with DeWalt. At minute 9, it's still tied with DeWalt and the Milwaukee at 72 miles per hour. It remained at 72 through minute 11, tied with the DeWalt and the Milwaukee. At minute 12, it's at 69, slightly faster than Milwaukee, but slower than DeWalt. And the Makita is finished at 12 minutes and 14 seconds. Unlike the other brands, the Makita is internally protected and stopped producing power to the connectors at around 12.6 volts. Even though all the batteries were fully charged, the DeWalt charger gave the DeWalt battery a slightly higher initial voltage than the competition, which may have given it a slight advantage. With regard to performance in terms of wind speed, the red line represents DeWalt. It had a slight advantage over the competition until minute 9. Makita, the orange line, had a slight advantage over Milwaukee until minute 9. The three brands seem to perform equally from minute 9 until minute 11. Under a high load condition, the DeWalt came out on top, Milwaukee in a close second, Makita third, and the Waitley in a distant fourth. In this next test, we'll see how the batteries compare by placing a 5 amp load on them. Since all these batteries are rated for 5 amp hours, we'll be discharging the batteries all the way down to 10 volts, which is more than usual, to see if we can get 5 full amp hours out of any of the brands. The ambient temperature in the shop is very close to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The Waitley is fully charged at 20.18 volts. After 10 minutes, the Waitley has dropped from over 20 volts to 18.36. It's now down to 17.64 volts at 20 minutes. Down slightly again to 17.22 at 30. The Waitley is almost out of juice at 16.49 volts at 40 minutes. And it's over for the Waitley dropping to 10 volts at 44 minutes and 32 seconds. The Waitley only produced 3.64 amp hours and 62.6 watt hours. Let's see if the DeWalt can do any better. 20.58 volts on the DeWalt. At 10 minutes, the DeWalt is at 19.27 volts, which is nearly a full volt higher than the Waitley. At 20, the DeWalt is at 18.48. At 30 minutes, the DeWalt is down to 17.73 volts, about half a volt ahead of the Waitley. At 40 minutes, the DeWalt is down slightly again to 17.2. And the DeWalt is still hanging in there at 50 minutes at 16.3 volts. And the DeWalt is barely holding on at 14.31 volts at 55 minutes. The DeWalt is finally finished at 57 minutes and 37 seconds. The DeWalt produced 4.74 amp hours and 82.1 watt hours. The DeWalt started out at 20.58 volts and the Milwaukee at a very close second at 20.53. And the Milwaukee is slightly behind DeWalt at 10 minutes at 19.03 volts. At 20, it's down slightly to 18.16 volts. At 30 minutes, it's down again to 17.55 volts. At 40 minutes, the Milwaukee is at 17.05 compared to 17.2 for the DeWalt. At 50 minutes, the Milwaukee's at 15.49 volts and is running out of juice quickly. And the Milwaukee is finished at 54 minutes and 41 seconds, which is about 3 minutes less than the DeWalt. It made 4.49 amp hours and 77.6 watt hours. Testing Makita next. Makita started out at 20.55 volts compared to 20.58 for the DeWalt. At 30 minutes, it's at 17.72 compared to 17.73 for DeWalt. At 40 minutes, Makita's at 17.17 compared to 17.2 for DeWalt, so it's very close. At 50, Makita's at 15.95 compared to 16.3 for DeWalt. At 55 minutes, the Makita is nearly finished at 12.92 volts. 
and the Makita gave up at 55 minutes and 15 seconds. Unlike the other brands, the Makita battery is internally protected and cut off power at around 12.6 volts. The other brands drain down to 10 volts. Dwalt and Makita, the blue and orange lines respectively, were in a virtual tie for nearly the entire test until minute 45 when the Makita began to drop off at a little faster pace. The Milwaukee trailed Makita and Dewalt beginning at around three minutes and never quite recovered. The Waitley really struggled compared to the other brands. The Dewalt came out on top at 4.74 amp hours, Makita 4.52, Milwaukee 4.49, and the Waitley 3.64. I have a compact freezer inside the shop and the temperature inside the freezer is around seven degrees Fahrenheit. Four batteries that have been inside this freezer for over 24 hours. So up next, we're gonna do some cold temperature testing on each of these batteries to see how they perform. The initial voltage for the Waitley is at 20.32. And the Waitley made it 42 minutes and 11 seconds, which is over two minutes less runtime compared to the ambient temperature test. It produced 3.51 amp hours and 55.6 watt hours. Testing the DeWalt next. The DeWalt started off at 20.58 volts. The DeWalt lasted 52 minutes and 53 seconds, which is over 10 minutes longer than the Waitley, but the cold weather definitely shortened the DeWalt's runtime by around five minutes. The DeWalt made 4.36 amp hours and around 73 watt hours. Testing the Milwaukee next. The Milwaukee started out at 20.45 volts. And the Milwaukee lasted 48 minutes and 48 seconds, which is around three minutes less than the DeWalt. The Milwaukee produced 4.02 amp hours and 66 watt hours. Testing Makita next. The Makita started out at 20.41 volts. The Makita made it 49 minutes and 54 seconds, which is longer than the Milwaukee and Waitley, but still short of the DeWalt by over two minutes. So the DeWalt came out on top for cold temperature performance, lasting 52.9 minutes, Makita 49.9, Milwaukee 48.8, and Waitley 42.2. The DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Makita all seemed to be together until the five minute mark, and then the DeWalt moved into the lead. Milwaukee moved into second place over Makita until around 48 minutes. By then, all the brands had dropped below 16 volts. The blue bar represents cold and the orange bar ambient performance. The cold temperature definitely took a toll on the productivity of each brand's shortening battery life by almost a half amp hour in some instances. I'll be attaching each one of the batteries to this plastic pipe and then dropping them from various distances to test the durability of each brand. The inner pipe will serve as a guide to ensure that each battery impacts the ground at the same angle. From 10 feet up, the Waitley handled the direct side impact blow without experiencing any damage. The DeWalt seemed to handle the impact just fine without any visible damage either. The Milwaukee weighs over 100 grams more than the competition. It's definitely built to take an impact. The Makita definitely doesn't seem as robust as Milwaukee, but it handled the impact just fine. Up next, all the batteries will experience a blow in the corner from 12 feet up. The blow to the corner from 12 feet up was definitely a lot of stress on the battery packs. However, the Milwaukee is a tank and seems to handle the impact the best. None of the batteries are damaged except for the DeWalt. You can see the batteries are starting to bulge out of the side of this battery pack. So a little bit more impact and these batteries are definitely coming out. Up next, I'm gonna drop these from 12 feet up with the bottom of the battery impacting the ground. The 12 foot blow to the bottom of the batteries caused some pretty impressive bounces. Fortunately, the DeWalt remained in one piece and none of the other batteries experienced any damage. I'm gonna go ahead and test out each one of the batteries to see if they still work. The damaged DeWalt. The Makita still works. I'm gonna go ahead and dismantle the DeWalt battery and we'll see what kind of damage took place on the inside. Apparently the battery shifted, knocking the side of this battery casing loose temporarily. I'm going to go ahead and try to put this back together, but I don't see any sort of internal damage. I previously dismantled a DeWalt 5 amp hour battery pack, and they used the Samsung 25R, which is a very high quality battery. Okay, I was able to get the DeWalt battery back together. The side is no longer bulging. It just popped out temporarily, and just removing the screws, pushing it back into position, and then tightening the screws is all it took. Let's take a look inside the Milwaukee. All these 5 amp hour batteries use 10 18650 batteries. I'm going to go ahead and cut open this battery pack so I can see what type of battery is being used by the Milwaukee. So the Milwaukee uses the LG HE2 battery and the DeWalt uses the Samsung 25R. Now both of these have the exact same specs. Both of them are rated for 2500 milliamp hours and 20 amps of current.
The Samsung 25R is used in both the DeWalt and the Makita. A slightly different model number, but both of these are designed to produce 20 amps of current and 2500 milliamp hours. Milwaukee, DeWalt, and Makita make very good battery packs. It seemed like DeWalt did the best as far as amp hour production. DeWalt definitely did not do the best as far as taking a hit. A little bit of damage to the DeWalt, but I was able to put it back together. Regarding taking a hit, Milwaukee definitely did the best. Now regarding the ability of the battery to protect itself, Makita definitely seems like the best engineered. It has the ability to shut itself down at the connectors before it discharges too far, damaging the 18650 batteries on the inside. All video ideas, including this one, our viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.